Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of PZTV. I am your host, Coach Clay Banks. This is the show where I interview industry pros and interesting people to unpack their minds and their lives to find out more about what makes them tick, their methods, their systems, their tricks and insights and all kind of goodies so that you can help make your life work even that much more amazing. And today I have a very special guest with me on a special episode because we are going to be talking about influencers and social media. That's what this show is all about. And I have with me a very special guest, Kelleth Cuthbert. And Kelleth is going to uh, in, give us some insight on the ins and outs from her personal experience about the world of being a person of influence with social media. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce Kelleth Kelleth, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, Appreciate you betcha. <laughs> so thanks for being here. Some, I hate the word influencer. <laughs> okay, good. Let's talk about that because it's like, okay, yeah, how are you with that? I, I just feel like it's, I don't know, the, the idea that someone could influence other people's actions. I mean, I know that's, I guess, what uh, what social media has become. But I feel like, I don't know. I, I guess because I, I don't have influencers that I necessarily follow and think like, ooh, what are they up to? What products are they buying? But it, it is a totally big and interesting industry. Um, it's crazy. I've been a fashion model for 14 years, and it's crazy how the world of influencers has affected and overtaken that world. In what way? In a lot of ways. I mean, I feel like traditionally, I mean, a decade ago, Fashion models, you know, you were assigned to an agency and you, you hit the pavement every day going to castings. Everything was in person and it was just m merely about your portfolio and your look. And that was basically it. And whether or not you were right for the particular job, but now very much so a lot of clients are asking for your social media following for a lot of details like that. So it is super important. So whether we love it or hate it, it's here to stay. It's important, sadly. <laughs> so it comes down to two girls equally qualified. Either one of them can do it. They got to flip a coin. Yeah. They're basically looking at the following. Absolutely. And because, yeah, yes. they figure that there's a good chance if you get the job, you will then post the work and direct traffic their way. Larger so, I mean, audience. Why not? Why not? Yeah, it's, it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. You would take the person with the larger audience. So um, a, a couple of things. Let's get the influencer uh, elephant out of the way here. If we weren't going to call them uh, you influencers, what would be another alternative name? I guess I, I hear people throw around the term social media personality. Although, even that, I mean, I guess aren't we She's all? She's an SMP. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we all social media personalities to some degree? I mean, we all in today's day and age, sort of by default, we all have social media. But you get the, but it's the blue tick? Is that what it is? Yes, yeah. <laughs> there it is, That's that's it's the blue pill. Okay. See? Verified social media, an SMP. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, a blue tick SMP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's, let's, um, let, let's, what qualifies that? Is there a certain number that people hit that goes, oh, you're now an influencer, or does that depend on, on, on the big players, or do, does it depend on, say, like clients and, and people who want to sell products? What, what? The word can really mean a big assortment of things. I mean, there's even micro influencing, which is the thing, micro influencers, that can even in some ways be more valuable than having a huge audience. It really just depends on how engaged your audience is and how uh, reactive your audience is to the things that you're promoting and how relevant your audience is to the types of products that you're promoting. I mean, if you want to promote, if you're a female, for example, and you want to promote a lot of like skincare or beauty products, but you have an all male audience and they live on the other side of the country, somewhere where perhaps a lot of these brands don't even ship right, to, right. it's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So it totally depends. Depends on what you're trying to promote, if there's any causes that you have behind you. Um, yeah, how, how relevant your audience really is. But I, I don't think it matters the size of your audience, just the quality of your content and how relevant that audience is. So there is, is there a number? Like, for example, my, my studio, I think we got to a high of 12,000, something like that. Yeah, and then we dropped that's great. down, we're like at 10, yeah. 10 and change or something like that. I mean, I don't know. Does that, am I supposed to be an influencer? I never even thought about it till just now. No, that, I feel like that's a really good, respectable following. I mean, and once you have 
at least 10,000 followers, you can add the swipe up link in your stories on Instagram. So I think that's a particular number a lot of brands look for that. We got or the above. swipe up link. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, you guys do. You have that. Oh, look at that. (laughs) Wow. Maybe I should be in that seat now. There you go. Let's switch. SMP. (laughs) I'm just just kidding. Yeah, right? I don't have the blue thing. Um, Okay. So it it really, what I'm hearing is, I mean, 50,000, would it be 100,000? I mean, I I mean, they could be of any size. Really. I mean, I know people that call themselves influencers that have you know, 5,000, 10,000, and then ones that have millions. So it could be anything. I think there's, you just adjust your prices if you're promoting products according to your following and your engagement. But I mean, it can be anything. And there's brands that are specifically looking to target um, customers through very large influencers and ones that are specifically seeking out smaller influencers. So there's a bit of everything. Yeah, it's it's become a thing. I mean, I, I, I've been around before, <laughs> There were cell phones and, and, you know, I've lived through the whole evolution of this whole thing and so much of our audience and maybe even you as well, uh, you, you guys, it's, it's, it's your lifestyle. I know young Danielle over here. I mean, she probably came out with a phone, uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they handed it to her as soon as yeah. she came out. Here's your baby and your phone. Uh, and here's your handle. Uh, no. So, so. It's just on your, your birth certificate? Yeah. And, and so, what I'm understanding now, it's actually, it's, it's huge. It's, it's a thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's definitely in, in, in our culture and it's a very real and powerful thing. So, I have a friend who uh, has a management company and, mm. and, and she tells me that it's, uh, th- th- they all draw their line somewhere, and she draws her line at a hundred thousand. She says, if you're if you're at a hundred thousand or just below that, you have to have a ten percent engagement rate. Hmm. And if you're above a hundred thousand, then it's a five percent engagement right. rate. And it's it gets harder and harder as the years go on uh, on social media to maintain a high engagement because the algorithm really works against you, and it's very difficult to actually have people see what you're posting. Can what, are very the, hard. what are the tricks? Uh, I think or techniques? It's hard. I mean, you're sometimes just kind of fighting a, a losing battle. I think all people are to some degree, but uh, you just have to post, I guess, play with the content you're posting and post stuff at peak times of day when you see that your audience is most likely to be on and engaged and post content that you know that they want to see. But I'm super, super grateful. I say this all the time to people. I'm so grateful I was born before technology boomed in the way that it did. I love that I grew up without a phone, without social media, without any of that stuff. I think I had like, I mean, MySpace was becoming a thing when I was at the end of high school. And I'm so glad that that was it. That was all that we had. And that was like, I'm so glad. I had a CB (laughs) radio. You know what that is? Yeah. A CB yeah. radio? And I was cool. Is, I was one of the few cool. people in my, in my high school and in college. I had a CB radio, man. And I mean, that's how we cut through <laughs> everything. But um, so are you comfortable talking about your 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 profile, your your online presence, your, your following numbers? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. I mean, they change frequently, but um, I currently have a following of about uh, 180,000. Okay. And yeah, I mean, engagement varies from day to day. It's and that's like, on Instagram. On Instagram, yeah. And mm-hmm. I have Twitter and Facebook as well, though I don't, I'm not as active on those ones. What are, what are you called on Instagram? Uh, just my thing is the same on everything, just at Kelleth Cuthbert. At, for those of you with a lisp, it's, <laughs> she's not lisping. It's no, at create Kelleth a lisp. <laughs> Cuthbert. Took me a while to figure that out. Okay, so um, you, you've watched this grow. Uh, what'd you do? You just started posting and oh hey my mom liked me kind of a thing and then and then you started seeing people respond right going way back when did you start I think I was actually a little late to Instagram I'm I can't remember what year it started but I think I probably joined it a few years after that maybe like 2014 ish and uh, I gained a pretty decent following maybe like 60 70 thousand just over many many years with posting a lot of modeling stuff yeah. which ironically i feel like is professional shots and yeah. it looks really good yeah, yeah which yeah. ironically i think is what people something people don't necessarily want to see as much of now i think people more so want to see real stuff of just not like some highly produced stuff where you're you know have professional hair professional makeup wardrobe all that i think more so people want to just see you in your day-to-day which I find that kind of content really hard to create. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't do it for so long because as much as I'm out here and I do all this on my personal time, it's like it's it's me. And it's like I've just had teams over the years trying like crazy to get me. And I'm just like, it's just like my sanctuary. I don't want people knowing about how I do stuff. And I'm right. like, well, those days are definitely gone. You know, it's not. <laughs> I, I know. I'm always I'm, I'm always there's the, the part of me that that hates the whole social media craze, but then I have, I guess, the adapt or die mentality. And in, especially in terms of modeling, and I think you probably see it a little bit in the acting world too. It's kind of a necessary part of things. And even with, with acting auditions, I've been asked my social media profiles, and I know people creep you on there. So you want to keep everything in line with whatever industries you're you're trying to be a part of. Yeah, well, of course. I even have it in my calendar. The, my team said, you've got to do this once or twice a week. So, I, like, on mm -hmm. Wednesday, I didn't do it. It's Wednesday at 12. It says, do your IG post. Right. I got to, like, <laughs> it's a reminder. I going to go, oh, I got to fit that in, you know? <laughs> okay. Hi. <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm getting better at it, though, Yeah. I think. They tell feels, me. It I think. feels tedious sometimes. I, I, I think yeah. I'm getting better at it. But what, when you were watching, like, your profile grow and, and, now you're, you're it's 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 like a balancing act it's a chess game of sorts and you're saying you're seeing the algorithm actually work against you yeah. so you you can you're, you're seeing all that yeah i mean initially when instagram started everything just posted in a chronological order so if for whoever you were following you'd see what your friends posted just in the order of most recent to least recent things and i feel like that was the ideal thing because you just saw everything that was posted and people engaged a lot more than now where you know, say you're following a thousand people, but you repeatedly like a lot of posts by just a couple people, that's all it will show you is just those people that you engage with. So if you want to see a variety of people, you need to engage with a variety of people. So it's very easy to follow people, but yet never see what they post. So what's a strategy like now you're looking at your, and I did, I went to your, I went to, to your, um, what is it called? A pay, what, a, what is it? A pro, Profile? What is, it's called a profile with Instagram because so, yeah. it's a page on Facebook. You go yeah. to your page. <laughs> what is it when you go to somebody's Instagram thing? It's like a profile, yeah. Their Instagram profile. profile. Okay. So when when uh, Danielle's looking at me, why doesn't this guy know this stuff? You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm old. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around. I had a cassette deck in my first car, you know, like, like a piece of toast. Yeah, those were the best. Do you remember those? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. A track. Oh, oh a track. You're old. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. My first car back in the '70s. That's awesome. I, I, it, I had an A track, and that's what it. You carried this box around with these bricks, um, but, but anyway. Uh, so, like, I, I went there, and I was looking at some of the numbers. I was watching your numbers, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm, I was because what was interesting is I did notice the. Just in my brief, I mean, I went a few, few, what down, and I was like, okay, yeah. Um, you're, you're, and you probably know this, but you're more real. You stuff, we're getting a lot more hits, yeah, or yeah. likes. That's what I'm saying. It's like people just want to see you just at home or just living your daily life versus you in a more glamorous way. Which, as someone that's modeled for so long, and that's the majority of the photos that I create, it's like, oh. Because people don't really want to see that. Why is that? I think it's more relatable. I think it's more like, ah, oh, this is what this per. I mean, everything on social media is fake. It's like, I guess, different people show different degrees of reality on there. Some people more so than others, but... Different all, degrees of reality. Yeah, it's all fake. Okay. We're all yeah. showing more or less our best selves. And I think... Filter Fantasia. Yeah. I hate that, though. I mean, I try, I try to be... Um, tried to show like less desirable parts of my life too. I mean, I sh I'm on there all the time, like without makeup and looking like shit and, you know, showing like real things that I'm going through. But also, I guess you want to maintain some privacy in your life and not not think that people care about every detail of your life. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think it is that makes somebody hit it? I don't know. I guess they're just like, cool. <laughs> I mean, you, you've got 180,000 and you've got, what, about an 8% engaged, 10%, 12, somewhere in there? I think I, don't I was know. trying it, to do the numbers. It varies quite yeah. a lot. Because I saw post, there were some yeah. posts, I was like, whoa, okay, this just jumped off the radar. And then this one right. came back down again. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking at it just quickly going, I don't really understand, you know, 
maybe there were more people on that day. You know? Right. I mean, what, what... Yeah, sometimes it is that. Sometimes it's like bad engagement because I posted at a weird time of day or on a weekend. But it'll be a post where I'm like, oh, I know if I had saved this for like an extra day, it would have performed really well. Uh, but it's it's a lot of factors. What about that know. extra day? Why? Just because? Just maybe it's like, oh, I posted on it on like a Sunday night when nobody's on Instagram or Maybe if I had posted it Monday morning, it would have done well or just things like that. You got to figure all that out. Yeah. Well, you're up to 180,000, so you're doing you're doing something right. I mean, there's a lot just of- Chugging f- along. <laughs> well, there's a lot of fashionable people out there, and it's it's like, that's, that's, that's respectable. Uh, so, okay, what would you say uh, would be advice to people that are building a following? I think just be- authentic to whatever it is that you do, whatever it is you're trying to promote, um, and be consistent in the kind of content you're creating and what, you know, the regularity with which you're posting. You know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm a filmmaker. I mean, I, I made my first film, I think, when I was 13, wow. 14 years old. I mean, my dad, we were, this was back in the, in the 60s, I think, early 70s. And, and, my dad was a photographer, so we, nobody had cameras. He was like, you know, some special dude because he, right. he was a photographer. And, and we had a, an, an eight millimeter camera. There were some families that did, but not a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just was not popular. Or did they really know how to use it? So I, I grew up, you know, producing and obviously come through. I have had several uh, incarnations of my production company and I've done everything. I've shot everything. And, and, you know, you're here in the studio, and this is a pretty high-tech studio. I mean, we got, it, we, we got all the bells and whistles, lights and filters and green screens, and we do all this yeah, stuff. That's great. And, 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 and I thought, okay, I'm going to make some really great stuff. And they're like, no, Clay, they just want you to hold their yeah. – just hold them. I'm <laughs> like, what, are you kidding me? I mean, come on. I want to shoot this really great quality yeah. stuff. No, they don't want it really edited fancy and all that stuff. And I'm just like, oh, man, this is crazy. That, that made me think of another interesting point is – I mean, I can only speak to the model actress side of things, but being married to a photographer slash having so many photographer friends. Oh, you're married to a photographer. I am. And having so many photographer friends and seeing how social media has in some ways demolished their industry as well, or at least changed it to a degree that makes it so different. Like you were saying before, only very specific people who were seeking out photography or filmmaking owned that kind of gear, whereas now... I mean, we can create that from a device in our pockets. There's good and bad to that. I mean, it's like kind of sad that it you have to wade through a lot of crap on the internet to find things of quality. But at the same time, it's kind of like a great equalizer in that. I mean, even like kids can make films or create cool stuff or share like a great message online. There's a lot of like, you know, negative, horrible things out there. But there's also a lot of great to people being able to share their perspective and do their own filmmaking or create their own photography. Yeah, it's you know, good I, and bad. I, I don't think, yes, exactly. You can't say it's this or it's that because yeah. it is. It, it is good and bad. I remember just as an industry guy when video was was poking its nose in and there was a whole thing, you know, yeah. nothing's going to replace film. You're not going to replace <laughs> film. You're not going to. And then I think Soderbergh was one of the first guys to actually, Steven Soderbergh yeah. uh, shot the first feature on an iPhone mm-hmm. back in, you know, like the late 2000s and, 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 and okay. And, and now it's just, you're, you know, you're doing film and it's cause you're impassioned by a film and you right. have the money. Right. But outside of that, no, it's too convenient. Well, the same thing happened with vinyl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Going digital. Yeah. I mean, and it's, yeah, again, that industry, good and bad, horrible in a lot of ways for the artists in that, you know, they're paid fractions of pennies for listens of uh, or, or plays of, of their songs. So like that industry has been destroyed in a lot of ways, but good in the sense that now a massive audience can discover your music and it's just so much easier to find new artists. But, you know, they have to be a lot more, I guess, inventive now with ways that they can actually profit from being a musician. And we're a little it's off. Sad. I want to just go off a little further and we'll bring it back because yeah. you probably had your share of discs. You had a disc library, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. I remember on my on my uh, visor, you could get a thing and you yeah, could yeah, put 12, yeah. 12 uh, 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 c- so c- hard CDs up there. So hard committing to which 12. <laughs> yeah, or, or they would make the thing where you could put load, load six in and yeah. things like that. You know, we had, you had to carry songs. And then 
uh, the big breakthrough is when Apple came out with the iPad and the, I don't know, do you remember what the ad was? It's famous. The famous ad for, mm -hmm. uh, not the iPad, the, uh, the um, iPod. The, yeah, oh, the yeah, iPod, yeah. the yeah. first iPod. Mm -hmm. They don't even call it that anymore, do they? No. Is it I, called an iPod? I think it's no. a, is that a thing still? Is it? Okay. We turn but to the youth in the room. The first, <laughs> the first iPod, when, when they, they invented this, the, I remember seeing the billboard. I was on the corner of Sunset and uh, I think it was Highlander La Brea. I remember seeing, seeing the billboard and it said, a thousand songs in your pocket. Wow. And I had, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't process it. I right. didn't know what I was, it was this brick, a white brick. Yeah. <laughs> And it said a thousand songs in your pocket, and I, I went, I don't know what that is, right? But that's how they they launched it. Hmm. We're able to do and it all was the huge. digital. Yeah, yeah. oh, it's crazy. Gosh, yeah, yeah. Now that seems silly, at just a thousand, but right. Yeah, it was revolutionary at the time. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so coming on, coming coming back into the, the the whole thing on this on the social media deal, what would you like to say as you've been doing this now for a few years and you've built up a following? What would you like to say about it, say to people that are wanting to do it, and where do you want to go with it? Hmm. I think to people that want to do it, um, just do it. Don't make excuses. Just post stuff, and if people respond to it, great. And if they don't, I mean, should it keep, be keep sharing it? Should it be thematic? Can be. I mean, a lot of people have different ideas of how it should be. Should you have a, a grid that all looks kind of similar with like a specific aesthetic or should you just kind of post whatever it is you feel like in the moment? I don't think there's any rules. Just create stuff that you th that you would want to see. I mean, if like a lot of people use social media to promote little like short films that they make or little sketches or little pranks or whatever and just create content that you would want to see. And I guess especially look for stuff that's, that's missing that you're – content you want to see that you can't find you know i, I i've been through my incarnations with this and it, i saw it coming and I, I i was warning people and it's still a warning that you know we're becoming cyborgs if you're not careful because you can't live without oh, we absolutely without a battery are. pack you yeah. have to have it or you can't function which makes I us <laughs> cyborgs yeah I, I talked about this years ago but um the the thing for me that i would put out because like i'm I'm not an influencer. I'm I'm a thought leader. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm an expert in my industry, uh, and I would do this when I first my team was having me do all this, and it was like, okay, you know, you get a couple likes here, a couple likes here, whatever. I, I'm not consistent. I, I wasn't really good at doing it, but I went, you know, something. Screw this. I'm just going to do something ass stupid. Yeah. And I got the most hits. <laughs> what did you do? I don't even remember. I just mocked it. Yeah. I went, oh, I just, I don't remember. I could go back, I guess, and look, but I just remember doing something really silly. And I went, oh, come on. Are you seriously? Is this right. is, this is what, and then I was like, I don't want to deal with this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want anything to deal with this. But of course, it's so much more now. You right. can use it so many different ways. Yeah. Who, who's like, do you know who the, like what the biggest, who's got the biggest profile or what would it be called? Who has the most hits, likes, whatever? Who's the, who's the strongest out there? There's like so a many Justin people. Timberlake or something. I mean, wasn't he one? I thought at one Selena point? Gomez had like hundreds of thousands. I think she's one of the biggest. And then my friend is a photo editor, and he was just telling me yesterday he was editing. I don't know their names, but this group of sisters or these two sisters that are the biggest people on TikTok. And he was saying one of them had like well over a hundred million followers Wait, we on have TikTok. A we have a TikTok person in the room. Is that? Do you know this? What is that? Who? The Demilios. How many followers or hits or whatever? I think I was like 3 million. Wow. Crazy. So is it like Crazy. followers, hits, and shares? Is that the followers, hits, and shares? Maybe. I, I stay away from TikTok. I have like my name reserved on it just in case I ever need it, but I, f I feel too old for TikTok. Do I have it's a, like Vine, do, do Snapchat, I have a name on TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> what's. She, she runs your TikTok. I know. I didn't know what my name is. What's this? Claybank Studio? Claybank Studio. On TikTok. We're on Check TikTok. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Follow Claybank Studio on TikTok. Follow us. Look at our videos. We'll look at yours. Let's have a party. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. You should um, do a TikTok dance right now. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I knew. I, I want to learn that shuffle. Shuffle. I'm fascinated hmm. with that shuffle. I feel Just, like you have the, the boots for a shuffle I, right I gotta, now. <laughs> I got I to gotta work. You know how to shuffle? Oh, cool. Yeah. We'll We'll do a we'll do a show on on the shuffle. 
on them. We'll put with like we'll, a really cheesy backdrop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll put some <laughs> weird thing in the background there. Um, okay. Come to CBSI and learn to shuffle. <laughs> so let's let's go let's go back let's go back to you uh, a little bit more about you. For obviously you, you've got one hundred and eighty thousand plus people that are following you and growing. Uh, they're following for all kind of reasons. But how about learning, uh, letting them know a little bit more about you? Like, you know, what what hmm. what makes you tick tock? No, we're good. <laughs> what makes you t- <laughs> what makes you tick? Smooth. <laughs> what what would you like to share with uh, with the peeps? What makes me tick? What makes me talk? Mm. Um, <laughs> I, I actually try to use my platform mostly to promote dog rescue. I do a lot of dog rescue, so I post a lot of dog related things. Which I think, I mean, people respond to pretty well. I get a lot of messages from people saying that uh, things that I've shared about my own dog rescue work has encouraged them to go out and rescue dogs in their various cities and countries, which is the coolest thing. I got a message the other day from somebody in Brazil that rescued a dog because they were inspired, a dog with like really bad behavior problems because they were inspired to do so. So that was cool. help me understand that because when I looked at your site and I was, I was only there briefly and like I said, did a, f- a few flips. Uh, it seemed all fashion. Yeah. Where where are the dog? Are there dogs mixed in there? I feel like my stories are like all ninety ninety percent dogs. Thing. I got to do the story yeah. thing. Yeah, I post on my feed as well dog stuff, but on my stories I post a lot of like weekly dog rescue operations. <laughs> so, like, give me an example. Like, what was one of your 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 last? So, there's story, there's feed. Is there yeah. one more thing? Uh, Direct. There's reels. Reels? What's yeah. Reel? Reels is kind of like I guess Instagram's answer to TikTok. Like where you can post video content that's sort of like that, and then there's also IGTV, which is kind of their version of YouTube. Yeah, where we you do a longer, we use that. longer length one. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that are sitting there going, "Why is this guy? Doesn't he know anything?" Look, I've got a big audience, and you know, <laughs> I need to talk to the peeps that uh, aren't quite as hip and cool as you guys. You got to <laughs> kind of know these things as well, you know. So, let's be open-minded. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so okay, so so that's a big deal for you, the dog rescue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, talk talk to me about this, the, the whole thing with the animal rescue. What got what 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 inspired all that? Yeah. So when I was, I've always been like super super into animals since I was a kid. But when I was a teenager, I started fostering kittens for the Toronto Humane Society when I lived there, and I did. This that, was that a you as a youth? As a youth, yeah. And then how, how old? I probably, I did this maybe like 14, 15 years old. Something about there. that age, huh? And you started yeah. rescuing kittens. Uh, so you started fostering kittens. So I would get kittens that were not, uh, that were separated from their mothers or that didn't have mothers and bottle feed them. And how like, do you, where do you find, how do you get those? Where do they you come can, from? Oh, it's like, there's a huge need for fosters, especially in the Los Angeles area for that. There's so many immature kittens that uh, need to be bottle fed. Yeah, you can just you can reach out to different rescues, different shelters. Always need this. Um, it's really fun. All right, so wait a second. <laughs> so now you fostering this whole thing about fo- fostering's always been tricky. I had some kids for a while that I was I was sponsoring, mm-hmm. and then they took them from me, and my my heart was broken. And I oh, was yeah, I, I, I can't painful. I could I couldn't go back. I was like I felt like they were mine, right? You know, and I'm sending them Christmas and birthday cards. They're sending Aww. me pictures. I'm like in this thing, and they went, "We moved your children on," and I'm like, oh, "What? what it was hard, it was hard yeah." And mm-hmm. so like what? So like you take in animals, and then you just take care of them for a period of time, right? And then get them ready for somebody else. Yeah, for their forever home. Although I'm not a great person to ask because I've personally foster failed twice. What does that mean? I I adopted two of the dogs that I fostered because I couldn't part with them. Right. Um, But I have also successfully fostered other animals. But is that bad? I mean, that's good. Oh, no, it's great. And like working on the rescue side of things, it happens all the time. People foster fail constantly. It's very hard to part with But isn't foster fail actually a success? Yeah. No, it's, it's a success whenever they end up. In a forever home. Okay, so you you foster. Can how many can you foster at a time? I think I, I only had two at a time, but I personally know people that will foster like six, seven at a time. And how long do you keep them? I the ones that I had, I kept until they were old enough to be separated and adopted out. So well, that, where do they go? Probably where, about two months. And where do they go? What do you do? You go. I'm done. They're ready. <laughs> Who do you give them <laughs> They've to? They've cooked long enough. Well, uh, yeah. No, when I did them through the Toronto Humane Society, so I would t- t- take them home for usually 
two-ish months. And then once they were ready and eating on their own, going to the bathroom on their own, everything was good to go and they'd be ready to go into a home, then they went back to the shelter and they would be adopted out from there. But uh, working on the rescue side of things now, uh, generally the way fostering works is they'll go into a home for either a predetermined length of time, like sometimes fosters will be like, you know, I have these two weeks free or, you know, a light two weeks of work where I could take in an animal. Uh, but after that, that's the only period of time I could commit to. And then some people will commit to up until the animal's adopted, which with some dogs could be over a year, could be a long time. So it's almost like a, an intensive care for the yeah. animal until they're healthy and then they're ready to be. That's very admirable. Yeah, it's it's so rewarding and fun. And so and when you've I... Been, you've been doing this since you were 14? Well, I did, I did it then. And then I've had a bunch of my own pets, though I never had a dog. And my family growing up was allergic to cats. So never had anything other than just like little, little foster kittens that no one could be allergic to. And then I moved to a new apartment in Los Angeles back in 2018. And I had a l tiny bit more space. You know how tight things are in Los Angeles, but a tiny, tiny bit more space. It was kind of a slow period of work for like a month. And I was like, hmm, kind of bored. Maybe I could foster a kitten. I have a little bit of room. And I reached out to a bunch of organizations, but it was a time of year where there actually weren't a lot of foster kittens in the system that were needing placement. So I thought, I could probably do a dog. Not that big of a difference. I could do a dog. So I reached out to a bunch of rescues and I found one particular dog named Pablo, the one who I ended up adopting first through an amazing organization called Pacific Pups Rescue. And I started uh, with their support fostering Pablo. And he actually ended up getting adopted about, about a month, month and a half into me fostering him. The woman took him home for an adoption trial for not even 24 hours. And she decided he wasn't the right fit for her went picked him up and after that i was like he's never leaving me again i was devastated for those 24 hours not having oh, him. is that the guy i met on on zoom last I, week or whatever i think you met you met pablo and milo <laughs> met pablo and milo yeah. yes i did <laughs> yeah oh, cute little pups yeah and then so and then milo i got uh, about a year later i um was i started pulling dogs for rescue through pacific pups rescue so i would go, I do go to the shelters. Uh, usually I'll find dogs online that are about to be euthanized or that have behavior problems or medical problems, or just ones that have been sitting in various shelters for a long time with no public interest. And we'll go, we'll pull them for rescue and then place them into different foster homes. So Milo was actually one of the first dogs that I personally pulled for rescue. He was in the medical ward at one of the local Los Angeles city shelters. And he could barely walk and would just kind of drag his hind legs around the room. And um, I took him home, uh, ended up, I, I intended to take him home for like a day, but he ended up staying forever. And he regained full use of his legs. He saw like a neurologist. That's he saw, love. Yeah, he did. It It turned out to thankfully just be a temporary condition and there was nothing wrong with him. So He's you totally were blessed. Fine. Now you got yeah. guys jumping all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> So that's awesome. Do you have to be, is there any certification or you just have to have a heart and you do it? Yeah. I mean, you just have to just find a, a rescue that, to volunteer with or a shelter. You work with they, a shelter then? I work the, with a rescue. So they do yeah. they have to vet you or they just develop a relationship with you? Yeah. I mean, you have to. So when I first wanted to foster through them, I had to fill out a foster questionnaire so they could learn about me. I had to send a video of my home just to make sure it was safe and there weren't any places where a dog oh, could get oh, injured really? or escape. Kind of like social services for the yeah. for the dogs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they check to pretty thoroughly to make sure that you're you know, a decent person and that, you know, you'll provide a nice home for it. And they provide all of the supplies, all of the medical care, everything that you would need. So it's super easy to get into doing it. Doing it, I encourage anyone that wants to, to do it. It's awesome. We always need more fosters. And since 2018, I have personally pulled, I think about 136 dogs and cats for rescue, which is cool. Since when? Since like 2018, 2019. Wow. Yeah. Are you like, do you like, is, is your like picture on the, on the wall in that place or something? Do you want well, there, there's no physical location. It's all foster based. Oh, there's so, no location? No, it's all. You like, just hand, well, the animals just kind of move through. Yeah. So, so most rescues work that way. Most rescues don't have like a physical, um, like kennel location. It's all foster based. So you can pull as many dogs, I guess, as you can afford the medical care for it, slash the, as many dogs as you have foster homes available for. So if it's a period, like particularly during the pandemic, 
it's been great in terms of dog rescue because so many people are working from home and they have all this time on their hands. Let's get a dog. A lot of people are really lonely. So even people that know they're eventually going to go back to a crazy work schedule so they can't adopt a dog, they're like perfect candidates to foster one temporarily. So we've had crazy amounts of foster interest, which has led to being able to rescue like just an absolute ton of dogs during the pandemic, which is cool. Well, is there like one big organization? Is there a head organization or something? I was watching, uh, yeah, I'm a football guy, and I was watching the games, and there was a popular commercial that kept coming up. Um, you know, since I got Turtle, have you seen that commercial? I think so, yeah. It, and it's, it's Turtle, because I kept hearing Turtle, Turtle, Turtle. So I saw Turtle, they're nothing but love, love it. And it was like, and, and but I didn't, I didn't catch what it, was, what it was for. It was some adoption agency thing. Mm. Is there like a big one or? There's a ton of big ones. Like, I mean, there's a lot of big shelters. You know, you have like the Best Friends Society, which operates all over the U.S. There's the Humane Society, right. which has a lot of branches. And then right. every city and every county have their own local shelters. There's a ton of independent rescues, like the one that I volunteer with. Who do you There's volunteer so with? Pacific Pups Rescue. Pacific Pups. Yeah. Pacific They're awesome. Pups Rescue. Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of money in this? Uh, in in dog rescue? No, yeah. it's all it's all um, nonprofit. It's all they're all registered 501c3s, so it's all nonprofit. So all of the any donations that you're lucky enough to get go directly to the medical care of the dogs. And the, the owner of um, Pacific Pups Rescue, she actually also created a brand of dog toys. So she sells dog toys on Chewy and to Amazon make more fun, to make more fun, funds yeah, 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 to yeah, pour yeah, sure. into all the medical costs and oh, all the cool. supplies that these dogs need. So like if somebody watching right now is going, I, I want to do this, I want to either foster or I want a pet. Yeah. What do you want to tell them? I would encourage them to... Go ahead, adopt. Hit them up. Tell them. I would encourage you to adopt. Don't shop. <laughs> there's a Ooh. yeah. I mean, there's just no no not a lot of good reasons anymore to purchase a dog versus adopting one. There's so many like just obscene amounts of dogs and cats, and I mean, really every kind of pet you can imagine in shelters at rescues. Turtles? Oh, there I see turtles all day, every day. There's pigs in Los Angeles County. There's so many pigs. Just sit like little pot belly pigs. Wow. <laughs> I mean, there's you could find anything you could desire, any breed, any age, if you look long enough, especially in a city like this one. But they have to They're, be legal pets. They can't be like tigers course. and stuff. Yeah. No, no, yeah. That's that's not good. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, I would encourage people to look around and to do the most compassionate thing, which would be to find an animal that doesn't have a home and help provide it a home. And I mean, you could find animals with every kind of behavior as well i mean if you just want a dog that's easy and loving and friendly and trained i mean you could find a dog for rescue that meets all that criteria or if you're up for a challenge or if you're open to a dog that a dog with multiple personalities yeah i've got one of those really i was just making <laughs> a joke oh, seriously <laughs> no he's 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 come leaps and bounds from when i got him but he actually um he had a lot of challenges. He was in a shelter for probably about six, seven, eight months of his life um, that we know of. And his whole life, he was already a senior at that point, and his whole life before that is a mystery. We have no idea where he was, but he had a broken tail, was super, super aggressive and reactive with certain people, men in particular. Um, he had a big showdown with my husband when I they first imagine. met. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was not a fan. We, we just were like, was well, it an alpha battle? It must've been. We were like, okay, we'll just leave the house. We'll, we'll go grocery shopping. And Ooh. when we get back, just hope that <laughs> things have calmed down and they've been in inseparable ever since. I lived with an attack cat and I'm telling you, I'd never <laughs> yeah. been so frightened. No, seriously. I was yeah. living in a, in a warehouse in downtown Los Angeles. Um, this is 11,000 square foot warehouse. And my buddy lived on the top and he owned the building and I was in transition. He goes, hey, you just come here until you, you know, you, you, you work through what you want to do. I said, cool. And I didn't know that at the bottom was occupied by a cat mm -hmm. who was not giving up its space. Mm. I was they petrified. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, the yeah. cat would attack me. Damn. I was, wow. I was living with a wild animal that would attack me. While you're unconscious. Oh, that was that scary. Was, it was really scary. I have a feral cat that showed up in my backyard, I think, probably about a little over two years ago. It took me a good, like, 14 months, I think, before I was able to touch her. But I've, I can now fully pet her. She purrs. I'm like, I'm, I mean, they say it's pretty impossible to domesticate a feral cat, but 
This is my mission. Wow. We're, wow. we're almost there. <laughs> love. See, love. Love yeah. goes a long way. Hey, love and food. I'll tell you just real <laughs> quick, uh, just a fun little kind of side story. Uh, I was, you know, I, I was cor a corporate um, business coach for, for a while, but I dodged out like around 19, for 10 years. And, and, and I dodged out because I was just having this acting itch. I was like, you know, because I was an actor, but then I got caught in this for 10 years. But I did a dodge out. And when I did a dodge out, um, I, I wound up in a small town of Midland, Texas. Hmm. It was a girl. Different, another story for another time. It's always a girl. A, a, yes, <laughs> or a guy, depending a guy. On, on the story. It's always a love interest. <laughs> yeah, it's a love interest. So um, I was living in the small town of Midland, Texas, which was, you know, just outside of nowhere, western Texas. And um, I, had, I, I, wanted, I had to figure something out to keep myself going while I was doing all this. And I actually started a business called Pet Finders. Hmm. Now, this was in the 80s. Right. You know, 80s, technology, zero, you know, pay phones. And uh, the way it worked is that I made up all these signs. I got a phone number, 1-800-PETS. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. And then I made all these signs with spray paint and everything, you know, and the, 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 girl, the gal I was with had a couple kids and we made a thing about it. And, and it, we put all these signs up all right. over town. So this is for people's lost pets? It says lost or found a pet call hmm. uh pet finders like Ace, Ace Ventura. <laughs> pet. seriously and and we put the signs up and then what would happen is i and i put ads in the paper yeah if you found a pet or you lost a pet call me and it was me with the phone and it was basically hey we found it i said could you hold on to that pet right and then I would just wait to see if somebody <laughs> would call, and I would try to put these pets together. I was crazy. <laughs> anyway, I tried that for a while. That's amazing. We, it's funny funny that it was called Pet Finders, because petfinder.com is like the biggest database to find a pet. In term, I missed it. Not in terms of lost pets, but in terms of if you're looking to adopt, you know, you could be like dogs within 50 miles of Los Angeles, and it will pull up every dog at every shelter, every rescue every independent person trying to rehome a dog. I didn't have the URL, but I had the 800 number. There you go. You know, that you still was have big, it? That was big, <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Does anybody use that anymore? Yeah. But that was a big deal. I mean, I had the phone number, 1-800-PETS, cool. you know? But uh, anyway, anyway, so that was my little, my, my little uh, uh, contribution to saving pets. I think awesome. We saved a few, but it didn't, <laughs> I couldn't make a living by any stretch of the imagination. So, okay, cool. All right, I want to, uh, I'm going to ask you the big kahuna question. All right, here it is. Scary. I asked this question, my, my audience knows I asked this <laughs> question to all my guests. But actually, it's, this is, you're the perfect guest for me to ask this question. Have you heard this question? Do you mm -hmm. know this question? You need to watch no. my show more often. Okay. <laughs> it's busted. So, so what, at, the end, at, the, at the end of every show, I basically ask this, and I'm, I'm presenting you with this question. We're in a place where you get a shot at one post, mm. and the post will magically be seen by everybody in the world Yikes. with an Instagram account. Mm -hmm. Everybody will see it. Right. What is the image and what is the phrase? Ooh. Well, it's definitely an image of me with a rescue dog promoting dog rescue. I guess the phrase would be adopt, don't shop. I mean, more than I would want to promote my acting or my modeling, more than that, I'd want to promote rescuing. So animals. a picture of you with a rescue animal, mm -hmm. and the and and the, the the quote would say, "Adopt, don't shop." Adopt, don't shop. Yep. There it is. Yep. There it is. That's everybody. That's the message I most use my social media to promote. Adopt, don't shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to conclude with? Say to people, I think that's it. Adopt, don't Just shop. Adopt, don't shop. Okay. Kelsey's, one eight hundred pets. One eight hundred pets. <laughs> you gotta get that phone number. See yeah. if you can get it. It's pretty good. Uh if people want to find out more about you, we know about your IG handle. Is there anything else you want to share? Where can they find you? Where can people learn more about you? Yeah, I mean my all my social media handles are the same, just at Kelleth Cuthbert. Yeah. Kelleth, it's been a wonderful interview and a Thanks. pleasure Thanks having for you having on me. the show. Yeah. Great talking great. to you. <laughs>
Guys, this is another fantastic episode of PZTV. At least I thought it was. I had a wonderful time. I hope you did too. We're here to bring you the latest and greatest, the sharpest and the coolest, and whatever's going on out there so that your life can also do the same. So until next time, guys, we just want to say thanks for tuning in. God bless you and be safe out there.